my favorite decision aid story and the time when I really became a convert to using these was I was taking care of a man uh, in his early 50s, originally from Haiti, who was a groundskeeper uh, in the town where I worked in the health center. And we were having a discussion about uh, colon cancer screening and the procedure of a colonoscopy. And uh, I told them that I had a video, um, and I was thinking these videos have just come out, I've got to figure out how to use these, that I was going to send him and I'd like him to watch it and then let me know what he wanted to do after we'd had an initial discussion about the pros and cons of screening. And he watched the video and um, called the office and said he wanted to schedule his colonoscopy, which we did. And then about a week before his colonoscopy, he called the office and said he wanted the video again because he'd already returned it. And um, shrugged and said, sure, that's, that's fine, thinking maybe he was rethinking things or I wasn't sure um, why he wanted to watch it again. And um, so after he had his colonoscopy and I saw him back in the office, I said, well, you know, you called and asked for that video again. Why was that? And he said, oh, my daughter wanted to watch it with me because she knew I was going for this test. And so I watched it with her and then we went through a few of the things in the video. It helped her understand what I was going through. And I thought, well, that was, that was really helpful for them as a, as a unit. And she has better English skills and it was actually, I think, a really good facilitation of his decision or rather affirmation of his decision. But the part that I always laugh about was a few months later at his annual visit, um, I told him that there was another cancer screening test that we should talk about and that was prostate cancer screening. And he can tell probably that I'm about to launch into a long discussion. He says, stop, stop, doctor. Do you have a video about this? <laughs> I'd rather watch a video, which I thought was actually quite funny, a little humbling. And I sent him the video and he made his decision on prostate cancer screening after that. So after that, I, I realized that you can use these videos even when you think it might not work if somebody maybe is English is not their first language or it's a complex decision and it's somebody who in his case wasn't used to discussions about cancer screening it actually worked beautifully within a family unit to teach them all about cancer screenings and it actually was far better in his case than me telling him about it so um, I, that's my favorite story. So I think they save time because I find that my patients and their families can come better prepared for discussions. Um, if I've given them some preliminary information through a decision aid, for example, just today I saw a man in his early 70s who has severe uh, emphysema. And hearing him in the waiting room, hearing him struggling with his breathing made me think we need to really make sure we're addressing advanced directives just one more time. But this is a complicated discussion and one that he's not prepared to have today and didn't bring a family member with him. But I'm going to make sure he leaves knowing that video is coming to his house that we have about um, peace of mind and stories about advanced directives. And I ask him the next time to make sure his wife and his daughter come to the visit. And I called them afterward and said that a video was coming and I'd like them to all watch it together and then come talk with me. So that really helped us focus our visit today on the medical concerns, but prepared me for a really well-informed discussion at the next visit with the whole family. So it certainly saved me time in that way, rather than spending a lot of time on the phone or spending a lot of time talking to the patient about something that I think he'd be well served by watching other families' experiences with. It certainly saved me some time, just that one example. But I think really people come to the conversation much better informed, and that's how it saves me time. I. You know, I used to think a lot harder about that than I do now um, in terms of I now have a really, really low threshold to prescribe these videos, um, especially after having watched them. And I know the content and I know how receptive my patients have been to seeing them, some more than I thought they would. Um, but I guess I would say that if someone um, has questions about a procedure or questions about a plan of treatment that I feel like there's anything that the decision aid can add, I'll send it to them and say, this is just going to reinforce what we talked about here today if they already feel pretty well informed. Or if there are a lot of questions and we're embarking on referrals and a whole treatment plan, this just helps them be better prepared when they see a specialist, for example, about their knee pain or their low back pain. <clears throat> or it really just, as I said, reinforces a plan of treatment that we've used. I had a, um, I've got another story for you. I had a woman who came to see me um, recently for sciatica and uh, 
and she called and she said, really, all I wanted was that video again? <laughs> um, I know what I've got, I've just got a problem with it. And I laughed and said, oh, well, next time you can just call us, we'll send you that video or keep it, good grief. <laughs> um, you don't have to call in. But I, I thought that that was just one good example of where it's actually, it can be a very good teacher of, of um, you know, self-management of, of many conditions. Um, and, and my threshold for prescribing it has gotten lower and lower and uh, to the point that it's almost if someone says they don't have a DVD or a VHS player, that's when I wouldn't send it. But uh, other than that, I, I, I tend to send them quite often. I think, um, I think that one of the real challenges is to address skepticism on the part of providers that this in some way replaces our conversations with patients and replaces the decision making that we would make in the office together um, and really frames the use of these aids as, a, as another tool to enhance what we do and to um, get over providers' concern about um, not perhaps having control over the content of the videos or in, in any way replacing their essential job as a doctor. The other thing I think is going to be really important is to figure out even more ways where this is going to save us time as providers and taking it off the plate. I'd prefer not to ever have to make the decision about sending a patient a decision aid, but rather have, for example, for cancer screenings that already be done ahead of time. And they've watched the video before their 50-year-old physical, and then we can just have a really well-informed discussion at the time of the visit. So that's what I see as some of the opportunities um, to make this really well accepted um, among our providers. The thing that I think is really wonderful about these decision aids is this is not a taped lecture by a physician, just repeating what I said in the office. These are patient stories. And there is nothing I can say in the office that replaces watching a patient similar to you with your same health problems, who's made a decision on a treatment plan or a screening test. It, that resonates so much more deeply, I think, um, with a patient um, who's watching that decision aid outside of the office and that's something I can never give it's really you know the, the patient stories are so much more meaningful um, and that's a real that's one part that perhaps we haven't articulated enough about the beauty of, of, of these these videos um, or these decision aids is that they're really helping patients make decisions by hearing other people's stories and I think that that's a really wonderful part um, and that's what the message I just want to get across um,